was t that's the business oh, that's administration. Not what you said. I know because mm -hmm. I read the long wrong line. Okay. I am in error in what oh, I, I did. What However, said. there was no second to it. However, to make the record correct, that sixteen thousand should be to a business administrative, not to administrative salary. Okay. Yeah. Representative McCarthy, you have a question. Yes, I, I believe that the, that the real figure is close to the 17000 because of the mileage reimbursement. I therefore make a motion that we reduce it from the 17000 including the 861 to 10000 I'll second that. Representative McCarthy moves that the, be sure that I'm right on this, business administration line. No. Go, no, the administrative salary line. Administrative, administrative salary, salary line goes to ten thousand. And and with the mileage and the rest of the green, they send it. Wait a minute. Okay. I don't think so. So that Representative McCarthy, under the administrative salary, let's see, what is that? Three thousand yes. dollars now. 16,000. 16, and you want to change it to 10,000 under the administrative? Nine. Nine. Under the business administration? Yeah. No. no under the combined 16,000 for administrative salary plus 1,000 for mileage reimbursement, that's 17. I want to reduce those two combined to 10. So make it nine and one or something. <laughs> And Representative Babson, so we're going to do that. I'm going to say that Representative McCarthy moves that we change the line item that was two line items of a thousand mileage reimbursement and the business administration. Oh, no, the salary. That is the separate. Administrative salary. Admit. When I look at administrative salary, it looks like it's three thousand dollars. Sixteen. That's no, sixteen thousand. That's the audit. That's three. That's the audit. It's three thousand. Okay. It's uh, fifteen. I'm sorry. The actual for two thousand eleven was fifteen nine ninety nine ninety six. The proposed for two thousand twelve is sixteen thousand. Okay. Okay. So that what we will do is do the administrative salary at sixteen and mileage at one thousand. Those combined, instead of seventeen, they will be ten thousand. Correct. That's what we want to do. Okay. And Representative Babson second that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Madam Chairman. Yes, Commissioner. Um, I, I would oppose um, what you're doing. Um, uh, I can't say legally that you can do that. Whether you have to vote the bottom line up or down, I can't say that. But I would say that. We're not going to find anybody to do that. Um, we're going to, the commissioners or the selectmen in that uh, location are going to end up doing it. Um, and we would charge more than that to do it because we'd have to learn from scratch. Um, if we could find somebody that was qualified within Hale's location, no question, we would do it. We put it out for, for bid. Uh, nobody applied for it. Um, but it, it's your... It's your vote, but I would hope that you would stay with our bottom line. Representative Fleck. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I just have a question about your bid process. When you put that out for bid, did you put a, a series of specs in there as to the requirements uh, or the qualifications of the individual you were looking for? Because normally, in the election process, we yeah. would not do that if we were electing a town right. clerk. Right. right. So I, I'm wondering then what you did. Did you follow the same process? We want somebody to do the, the work of the town clerk, but instead you also added a list of... That's correct. And we got that list from the previous um, town clerk or administrator. And so we had... Uh, I know we had more than three candidates for the job. Okay, follow up and then... Yeah, just to follow up to that then. I would assume that you would be opposed to just an open-ended uh, solicitation of, of someone who would do the work of the equivalent of the town clerk. You, you would not want to follow the process that's followed in a town. In other words, you're going to look for a specific assignment, specific duties, and that's the only thing that will just work. Just based on past experience with the person that we had before, we thought she was qualified, but it ended up that she wasn't. 
Okay. Uh, and she admitted it. She said it's beyond my knowledge. Uh, and I thought she was an intelligent lady um, and could do the job, but it ended up that she couldn't. Okay. Thank you. Representative Merrill. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm correct that this money is all being raised by the people of Hot's location. Kim yes. Hales. Hales. Am I Hales. also correct Hales. that they reviewed this and approved it? They, uh, we sat down with their um, association, and I believe there was so, what, 15 or 18 people there. So, so even though we might not agree with it, they did, and it's their money, right? Well, it didn't no, seem right. didn't seem to have There's any no objection. Yeah, we didn't know. It was on the paper. It comes from them, so we think we have yeah. input in it. So follow up on that, I mean. So, so you don't yes. so you don't have like a town meeting where people come in and discuss it and vote. We never have had that. No. We had the, for the first time. No, that's, I'm sorry. It's the second time since I've been commissioner. We had one where we tried to get them to form their own town, and they didn't do that. Um, we were invited to the annual meeting, uh, and we tried to explain certain things that that is in the budget. Uh, and then we had a sit-down meeting with about 15 of them uh, and went over the budget. Um, I don't believe they had concerns, at least they explained it. Maybe we, maybe we said that there's nothing they can do about it. I don't think we said that, but... Um. Yes, Representative Schmidt and then um, McCarthy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I just one question before I before this comes up for a vote, and I'd like to direct it to uh, the folks in back of me. Uh, assuming we approve the motion, are, are you prepared for the consequences? Of, well, is that acceptable to you? Or? Well, from our point of view, the person that we have as our secretary bookkeeper probably could assume the duties if she had to with a little yeah. bit of training, and she'd probably be happy to have the income. <coughs> As selectman, I don't want to go to court. <coughs> no, I just never Representative, um, Representative Schmidt, do you have any other? That takes care of me. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, Representative McCarthy and then Representative Fleck. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, what I can say is that I've attended several meetings since I'm from Conway, and I live very close to Hale's location. I have attended several meetings with, with, with many members of the uh, the Hales Location Association there. Their biggest complaint, the biggest complaint they had was the 300 and some odd dollars an hour that they have to pay um, their secretary, tax collector, whatever you want to call it. That's what I heard from the people who live there. They don't think it's right that she's getting mileage and, all, and, and 300 and some odd dollars an hour for you know an hour or an hour and 15 minutes a week um, and so uh, yeah. listening to the people you remember we are the representatives of the people um, that's what I heard thank you okay representative Fleck uh, just a question of the uh, commission is uh, in the discussion that you had with the association was the issue raised by the association about the dissatisfaction with the uh, with, with the salary paid. Uh, I'd let them speak for that. Yeah, I think in, in that meeting we were really focused on the situation with the roads. If, if you look at the road situation to us, that was a bigger issue <coughs> than going through the budget line by line item. The salary of the tax collector was something that we talked about in the past, but it wasn't really the focus of the meeting we had there. That was the 200000 how we do it, how we coordinate the contract, that seemed to us more important at the time. Yes, Representative Fleck. Just a follow-up. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I might like to support the motion. I, I'm just not sure I understand the problem. I, I don't really understand the definition of what we're trying to do, what we're trying to address. And uh, that's where I'm coming up short on the whole thing. That's, that's I think for the parliamentary, what has happened instead of approving 397,538, we would, if the amendment goes through, we would be eventually to the, ought to pass as amended if it goes, it would be at 390,538. Representative McConkey. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, my understanding of this whole uh, budget process is that, that this is a uh, 
pass-through operation. Their expenses, uh, it's a formality for us to approve their expenses, mm -hmm. and the, uh, and the uh, commissioners uh, administer uh, uh, their monies. Um, I heard that there is somewhere in the neighborhood of 160 residents. Uh, I hear there was an attended meeting with 10% of the population, uh, which is not overly bad. Those people were there to speak. They didn't mention this problem. Uh, I have nothing in writing in front of me. I believe these are good people behind me. I'm not going to support this motion. I think Hale's location needs to get their own. If this is a real issue for them, they need to make it known to us. Uh, next budget, and I won't be supporting uh, this motion to reduce it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Kenny. Yeah. I talked to people of Hills location, and uh, they say it is too high the salary of the chlorine. That's why I oppose it. I didn't support this budget. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. Um, what we have in is amendment to the motion, which takes seven thousand dollars out of the financial administration bottom line and made by represent McCarthy second by represent Babson um, all those in favor you want to raise your hand or you want to just, roll call just the on? amendment right this just, is just, just the amendment. amendment do you want the <coughs> a roll call or you want a hands okay, all those in favor raise what's your the hand amendment? Five in favor. Those opposed? One, two, mm -hmm. three, four, five, six. So the motion does not carry. There is a motion on the floor now by Representative uh, Knox, second by Representative Chandler, to approve um, the Hales location budget of $397,538. Um, all those in favor, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Those opposed? One, two, three, four. Seven to four. The motion passes. You have your, I would um, probably um, advise you to, um, for the Hales location, if you want to change your budget, be sure that you have um, enough support and you give it to us that you want to see what's going on. So, thank you. I voted for 14. What? Uh, she's wondering why I voted no and yes. I mean, yes and no. That was just yes and yes. Yes, that, that, that's <laughs> crossed my mind, Representative Alvin. <laughs> okay. But now, um, yes before we voted, no. yeah. let's look and see. We have a contract for the nursing home of... Um, 30 cents an hour for this year and 40 cents an hour for next year. Do you want to give us, and again, it's taken us, what we usually do in about five minutes takes us about an hour, so now we have uh, the, the nursing home contract. Yes, Madam Chairman, we, uh, we met with the union, I believe, um, at least three times, if not four times, to look at this um, union contract. The only thing basically that we change financially is the 30 cents the first year, 40 cents the second year. The first year would amount to $37,188. The second year would be $49,584. Um, there were some other items that we uh, discussed that are more management type. Um, for example, we have a um, uh, an episode situation in the nursing home where people are allowed to go up to seven episodes. In other words, uh, uh, they stay out for some reason um, and then they call in <coughs> saying they can't come. In a nursing home business, we have to have the people, the LPNs, the RNs there. Uh, if we don't have them there, then we have to hire them either from um, <coughs> per diem people that we have a list of. If they can't come in, then we have to go to the pool out of Concord. And as you know, over the years, uh, I've told you it costs us $75 an hour to hire those people. Um, so what we have done is with the union uh, representatives and management, we're going to put together a committee to, to look over the episode situation. Uh, two of us, at least two of us, uh, don't like that situation. We want to change it. 
the union also wants to change it. So that's a management type decision. Um, and we'll have a, a, a study committee to look at that. Um, the other item was definition of seniority. Uh, before it went by departments. Now we're saying it goes by facility. Uh, seniority might be uh, if they're applying for a job or if they want to go on uh, leave, uh, the seniority fits into that situation with the union contract. Um, and we're changing the fiscal schedule from um, to January to January or January, January to December uh, so that we're in line rather than going the way we are now. The union contract still would be effective the 1st of April. Okay. That's good. Am I, did I say that correctly? Okay. okay. This gentleman here is the union rep for the nursing home. He's yes, not sir, on our staff. He's a... Your name? Ken Fanjoy. How do you spell that last one? for F-A-N-J-O-Y. Fanjoy. Okay. Thank you. Representative McCarthy. And then Representative Babson. Um, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I, the uh, the increases, the three percent and four uh, percent, three uh, thirty three, cents and forty cents. Oh, thirty cents and forty cents. Um, can, who, do the supervisors that include the supervisors? Everybody, that, you know, and the jail and, and, and the sheriff. Supervisors are not included. Yes, yeah. this is the nursing, nursing home. home. This is strictly know, the nursing but, home. Uh, this contract is different. This doesn't include supervisors. Yes, so, it doesn't. So, this. This contract is strictly union, but in our budget already, they're getting the 30 cents too. I mean, to be fair, other people, um, not only administrators, but people that work in the office, um, other people that are not union, and I can't think of them right now, um, deserve to get the same amount of money. Now, in previous years, we went by percentage. When you go by percentage, that means the higher paid ones get a higher increase. I felt strongly we ought to go back to 30 cents an hour because the lower people would benefit from that perhaps more than the higher paid ones. All right, maybe we should go back and forth every two years, I don't know. But I felt strongly, we've got a lot of people over there that are not being paid what they really deserve to get paid. And if we went by percentages, it wouldn't help them. But by going a flat rate across the board, it would. Yes. Mm -hmm. But what I'm getting at is, uh, you know, you have nurses over there, the supervisory nurses that are getting over $100,000 a, a year. Um, at least one, and, and then, of course, the, super, the uh, 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 superintendent. Um, they're also getting this, this, yes. this raise? Yes. I would say that, um, with the exception of the RNs, all the other nurses are in the union. All right, the RN that you're speaking about, um, I don't know what her home life is like, and I don't particularly care, but she works double shifts. She works nights, so she gets a shift differential. She works weekends. She gets a shift differential for weekends. And so, yes, I'll agree, she makes about $100,000. Now, is that cheaper doing that way or hiring another RN? with all the benefits that go along with it, okay? I don't think it's cheaper to hire another RN. I'd rather let her work that extra. Representative, okay. Representative McCarthy, do you finish? Yeah, okay. So the, the, the $108,000 that she made last year, mm -hmm. well, the year before, actually, is what yeah. the, the, the figures I'm going by, that included all overtime, yep. uh, the, the extra shifts, and, yep. and all the rest of it. That I, I wouldn't say overtime, but I'd say extra. Extra shifts, yes. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Representative Babson and then McConkey. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Well, Mr. Sorensen, does the contract with this uh, redefinition of, uh, of seniority, does that give individuals bumping rights? It gives individuals the right to apply for a job higher up than where they are. That's not bumping rights. Let's say it's not be bump, a, well, let's say there's going to be a layoff and you you have one really good worker and that it doesn't have seniority and uh, have this top seniority and you have one that does I'm and afraid, isn't a good worker. I'm afraid does that, that person that's go? what would happen. Yep. Let's revise the contract. Well, then you're paying, you're, you're paying uh, um, 
a sort of a con not a conflict of interest, but you're picking somebody that uh, is a good worker um, versus somebody that's a poor worker. Uh, and how do you choose which one that goes? Do you choose because she's a poor worker? Apparently, but, well, the contract doesn't make any difference because they're both going to get 30 cents. So. Are you talking about bumping people? Yes, but I'm just, I'm being, I'm being facetious. You're paying them both the same thing. Mm -hmm. And that's, in my opinion, one of the things that's wrong with the union contract here. The good worker is protected as equally as the poor worker. And, um, that's union. I don't agree with that. Okay. Represent McConkie. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I stepped out, so I apologize. Commissioner, if I, if I could. Commissioner, you're, you're discussing the union contract. Is the goal of this to gain our support today on Yes. This? Could I? Uh, yes. Could I? Um, I think Representative Babson's brought up brought up a valid question. Is there a provision for now that they have negotiated the contract, um, the union contract, so that the delegation now could be provided this contract for review? And if so, I would suggest that we allow ourselves a period of time to do that, um, 14 days at a minimum. Uh, so that it can be reviewed before we make an approval of a contract. If there's just one thing: if we wait 14 days, it'll be passed. It'll be past our deadline to approve the budget. So be <clears throat> can we see the contract? I'll make it whatever it is, Mark. 13.9. Is the contract available for us to I would say the same thing. I think. Um, I think what the delegation's responsibility is to approve the the financial portion of it. The management takes care of the other portion of the contract? Yes, but we, we get, we, okay, Representative McConkie. Thank you. Um, if, um, well, can we dive more into this? I, I have a question uh, of the contract. Uh, I listened with, uh, with great intent at the commissioner's meeting this week and heard the um, um, discussion from, and I'm, I'm apologize that I don't know um, Rob's, uh, Fibers, yes. Yeah. And uh, speaking of an issue of uh, overexpending on the food line, and um, I think his uh, discussion and his comments were spectacular. And one of the suggestions coming out was that in future contract negotiations, that the commissioners should seriously consider dropping free meals from the nursing home and from mm -hmm. the jail. Um, I believe that running at this point in time almost $3,000 over that uh, expenditure line uh, for food. Could, does your new contract reflect that personnel at the nursing home will no longer be getting free meals? The personnel at the nursing home and the jail would continue to get free meals. What we have done, effective the 1st of April, was to um, Everybody else has to pay for their meal. Thank you. If I could follow up, um, I understand that, and I, I would argue that that price at two dollars for a sandwich and three dollars at a meal, uh, in my opinion, in the real world, is a number that's not even equitable. But your your uh, administrator, I think, made a so solid point, and it seems to me we're at that juncture right now. Mm -hmm. It could save the county thousands of dollars man hours and so forth so uh, again I think it's another reason why uh, there's more savings that could be could be had here and I think the delegation should take a look at that contract yes uh, representative McCarthy and then Merrill and I just want to ask is the contract ready for us to be able to look at you have approved it we can have it yeah yes it we can have it run would, off yes but it would be okay representative McCarthy Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I'm sure that the Commissioner understands that according to RSA 273, the labor laws, um, to not inform the delegation or the legislative body of all cost items contained in a contract mm -hmm. is considered unf an unfair labor practice. Um, I, I also know that you're aware that my bill passed, it hasn't got to the Senate yet, and in the future, we will be able to put a member of the delegation to sit in as an observer on all contracts, mm -hmm. government contracts. Um, my question really is, are these, the increases that you just talked about, yep. 
are they the only cost items contained in that contract? According to the law, you have to inform us of all cost items. You only all you the inform the other one. Would be deals? The meals, which is already in the collective bargaining agreement. Yeah. Um, I can't think of any other cost medical. items. Medical. No increase in medical costs, uh, insurance. Uh, um, uh, yeah. Retirement costs. Uh, um, You're right. And, and, and the other thing is that I, I may I, uh, madam? Yes. Yeah. I, I went through the old contract yeah. with yeah. a fine tooth comb. I couldn't find anything about um, the, the uh, nurses having be able, being able to bump people for overtime. It's not in there, and, and that was agreed to that it's not in there. Is that that hasn't been put in this contract? Has we, it? we changed that to uh, the definition of senior seniority. Uh, was clarified to mean seniority by facility. Before it was by department. So we might have in the dietary a senior person there <coughs> that would cause um, a situation where in another department they had seniority. So who gets the, uh, the benefit of having leave um, above everybody else? And they have to have it in by a certain time, time uh, period. One follow-up? Yes. Um, and, and finally, the, uh, the what, what Representative McConkie was talking about, I did. I saw nothing in the in the old contract relative to free meal. Is that actually in this the new contract that everybody gets a free the, meal? The contract is not changed except for those items that I mentioned. Uh, well, I, I still think we ought to be able. To, we ought to have the contract. And, <coughs> you know, like I say, according to RSA 273, we have to be informed of every single cost item contained in a contract. Could I ask Madam Chairman yeah. the, the union rep to add anything to what I have said? Um, Basically, yeah. um, this negotiations was agreed upon with the commissioners and the union and the members. Uh, we still got to bring it before ratification, before our membership. As you may know, I mean, we keep hearing about the retirement system, how it increases. For a lot of years, a lot of people didn't know. I wish I would have brought the paperwork with me. I didn't know I was going to have to come up and speak. But for many years, the changed. county or the commissions or whatever, there was contributions made to the retirement system when employees were having 5% removed from their paycheck and the, the states or the town or whatever were only paying 2% because it was adjusted by what the stock market did. So, I mean, for all those years. And now it's come back to haunt us, unfortunately. It really has, and I'm, I'm not passing blame because it was something done through the New Hampshire time system many years ago, long before probably I was even born. Um, so that has created a, a shortfall in cash. It really has. So now, not just the community pays more, but the employees' contribution have gone up 2%. So their take-home is less money than what it was two years ago for the simple fact is 2% of what they make gets taken out. Um, that is in litigation. I guess there's a big fight up there about that, which I don't try to get involved with. Um, the other thing was there was a problem with holidays where we were creating a per diem uh, overtime situation. The union recognized the problem. Mm -hmm. We came up with some language to try to make it equitable for both parties. Um, we added some holidays in there that now if the employees call in on those holidays, they have to make up the time. It was one of the other issues that we worked on. I think there was a lot of compromising done from the employees and from the commissioners to reach this agreement. So uh, I'm hoping that it will pass. Okay, thank you. And you did, and you, just to make a clarification, that the union members over at the nursing home have not voted on this, is that? No, I thought they, they did. did. Uh, I don't know. I, I thought they passed it 44 to okay, well, 8 hasn't, or something like that. Yeah, hasn't called me, so. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it has been it has been approved by the membership. I have okay. not spoken to him since okay. the end of meeting. So I was okay. Representative Marrow and then Chandler. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I I just like to say this: this the union contract may be the best contract in the world, but I have never voted for any contract that I haven't been able to read that I don't intend to start now. Representative Chandler. I would suggest I don't need to make this motion, but I just yeah. suggest we. For we'll go to this discussion until we have a copy of the contract. It seems like everyone wants to see one, so let's okay. just wait till we get a copy, and then we'll have the discussion at the appropriate time. Okay. So what we need is a copy of the contract. Um, the uh, representative McConkie did say 
and I understand there was an assignment.